The door creaked open, expelling the scent of freshly baked pies into the evening air. A little pale yellow filly peered up at me, unafraid and curious. Can I help you with something, mister? She squeaked, her high-pitched voice not mixing well with the country accent. I smiled as warmly as I could, standing as I was in the brisk shadows cast by sunset. Part of me wanted to push straight past the filly and into the toasty house, but if legends were to be believed, such an action could have very well spelled my doom. I'm here to meet with Miss Applejack. Immediately, her eyelids lowered halfway. Oh, she said in a bored tone. Probably some business associate, ain't you? Not quite. I'm an independent investigator attempting to. I don't need your gibberish. Hold up a moment, and I'll get my sis. The filly rolled her eyes and stepped back inside, closing the door. I adjusted my suit, somewhat offended at being treated so rudely. Of course, all it took was the distant buying of some sheep to remind me where I was. I decided to relax my standards, if only for an evening. These ponies weren't the first of their kind I had spoken to in recent days, but hopefully they would be the last. Everything I had found pointed me here, to a mare named Applejack. Maybe she could finally give me the full story. The door opened once more, this time revealing a mare the same height as me. She had a slightly dirty-looking orange coat, and her blonde mane was tied back, both signs of a hard-working pony. Her eyebrows rose in my suit. Uh, I don't do business after dark, especially not with strangers. I shook my head. I'm not a business pony. Learning from my mistakes before, I kept things simple. I'm just looking for the truth. Truth, huh? She chuckled. Well, you came to the right place, didn't you? You're looking at the element of honesty. Her mirth faded quickly, though, and she tossed a suspicious glance my way. What kind of truth are you looking for? The tension in my mind was palpable as I answered her. What happened to Sheriff Brayburn two years ago? She gave me a hard, appraising look, and for a moment, I thought she was going to slam the door in my face. But then, to my extreme relief, she sighed and stepped to one side. Y'all better come inside. I silently followed her into the house. The entry hallway was short, with two doors on either side. She pushed through the first one on the left and brought me into a family dining room. A round table with a checkered tablecloth sat in the center of the room, with seven chairs around it. Only one of them was occupied, however, and it was by the same little filly who greeted me only a few minutes before. Apple Bloom, hun, why don't y'all finish up your homework upstairs? Applejack asked kindly, but I could see it wasn't really debatable. Apple Bloom gave her sister a frown, and an exchange took place that I was not privy to. After a few moments, the filly sighed and snatched her school bag from beneath the table, packing her things away quickly. Fine, but you better tell me what's going on later. Later being when I had left, I assumed. The awkwardness of being amongst a family of strangers was not lost on me, but I preserved. The answers were so close, I could feel them. As the younger sister left the room, and Applejack began getting something out of the cupboards in the adjacent kitchen, I looked around. It seems like a fairly standard homestead, at least from what I knew. Every piece of furniture was worn but loved, and various instances of do-it-yourself repairs were visible, from the uneven sanding of the chair legs to the plastered wall barely concealing little cracks. The only thing that made me double-take was the rifle mounted above the doorway. I didn't even notice it at first, situated as it was directly above the door. It was an earth pony model, with all the parts, including the barrel, made bigger to accommodate hooves. I had seen unicorn guns three times smaller than the one on the wall, but for some reason, I didn't feel like insulting it. There was a little gold-plated inscription below it, but it was too high up for me to read. It says, remember the red rule said Applejack through gritted teeth as she carried a tray into the room. Just a little family saying. 
It was too late to pretend I hadn't been looking, so I just gave an interested yet non-committal grunt in response. When I looked at what was on the tray, a flicker of excitement shot through my veins. Two mugs and a big bottle of adult cider. This was it. I was finally going to learn what happened. She waited for me to take a seat and started pouring the drink. I want you to understand something first. I nodded. We country folk have always dealt with our problems our own way. We don't see the point in getting other ponies involved if we can fix it ourselves, you hear? I nodded again. So no matter what you think of us right now, y'all keep that in mind. We're simple folk, and we find simple solutions. Applejack slid a mug over to me and sat herself down on the opposite side of the table. I took a polite sip, which turned into a gulp as the flavor washed over my taste buds. This is very good cider, I stated obviously, tossing the mare an appreciative smile. If you're hoping to loosen my tongue with flattery, don't bother. I'll tell you whatever you want to know, but I'll do it my way. She took a long drink from her mug. Right. She said after a moment. Right. She repeated. Okay, Rayburn, two years ago, what'd you want to know? I sipped at the cider to steady my nerves. Why was he the sheriff? Y'all never met him, did you? I shook my head, and she did the same, only sadly. Shame about that. You'd know if you met him. Kindness and structure and brains all rolled up into one stallion he was. You know, he never asked for the job. I didn't know that. Yep. The townsfolk begged him to do it because they knew he was perfect. He had Appaloosa in top-notch shape quicker than you could say buy some apples. We were so proud. Sounds like a lot of responsibility for one pony, I said with a frown. The mare leaned forward, gesturing enthusiastically with her free hoof. That's the thing about Brayburn, though. He didn't see it like that. In his eyes, the whole town was his home, and he was just doing little self-repairs when he was being sheriff. That sounded familiar. It wasn't clear if Applejack realized that she shared that trait with Brayburn, but I decided not to bring it up, lest she change her mind about answering my questions. So he loved the town, and the town loved him back. I lowered my voice. What went wrong? Dirty rich. She spat the name like sour gum, and the corners of her mouth wrinkled in contempt. I said nothing, waiting for her to continue. My mug sat forgotten on the table. You might have heard of his brother, Filthy. Lives in Ponyville. Does business with us. Friendly fella. Not dirty, though. No, sir. He's as foul as the apple that never falls. Rotten to the core. He saw the little life his brother had carved out here and got jealous. The farm pony slammed her hoof on the table. Imagine that. Jealous of his own flesh and blood. Despicable, I agreed quietly. So Dirty came to Appaloosa one day, bringing all sorts of bad ponies with him. Real scum of the earth types, you know. The kind of ponies who spend their days and hours preying on good folk. Suddenly, a proud look crossed Applejack's face. My cousin was on top of them the second they arrived. He knew who Dirty was and what kind of ponies he traveled with. Braeburn marched straight up to them unarmed in the broad daylight, the whole town watching, and said to them, This here's a peaceful town. If y'all can't swear you ain't up to no good, I'll let you stay. If not, then I'm gonna ask you to leave. I whistled appreciatively. (whistles) That would have taken guts. (laughs) No kidding. Chuckled Applejack, pouring herself some more cider. But that was Brayburn in a nutshell. Guts, and lots of them. They did something worse. Dirty looked them straight in the eye, unblinking, and said, We're just travelers looking for a home, sir. Not a troublemaker among us. Her hooves tightened around the mug, and she glared into it. They lied straight to his face. There wasn't anything I could say to that. Clearly, the idea of lying was almost a personal insult to her, the element of honesty. I made a mental note to watch what I said. 
honesty in this family was tradition long before I came along. The Apple family doesn't lie. Never has, never will. And y'all better believe that's the truth. I quickly nodded and took another polite sip of the cider. Not even the flavor could distract me from the intensity in her green eyes, though. So what did Sheriff Brayburn do? I asked in an attempt to divert attention. Applejack sighed and scratched the back of her neck. I don't really like this part. Y'all must understand, we're trustworthy ponies, and we always expect every pony else to do the same. Brayburn, well, he believed him. Took Dirty at his word and let him come into town. Oh dear, I said quietly. She nodded gravely. Yep. The first mistake he ever made a sheriff was letting those shady folk inside. Ain't nobody gonna disagree with that. After a moment of silence, I couldn't help but ask. Why did Dirty go to Appaloosa? Kinda particular, ain't it? He and his brother were more city folk. And I thought it over after all was said and done. And I think I know why. I leaned forward and rested my hooves on the table. And she did the same, hugging her mug. His brother Filthy got his big break when he started here in Ponyville, way back before you and me were born. He got in early and made a fortune through our apples, but Dirty missed out. So after all these years, he must have been traveling and looking for his own break. Appaloosa, I blurted out excitedly. Applejack nodded. Damn straight. He saw the little town getting bigger and wanted to get in on it before it was too late. Must have thought his luck had finally turned or something. But the thing is, he didn't have the brains or the patience like his brother. He didn't know what to do with an opportunity when he had it. Like when my dog Winona chases the mail mare. And that's when things got ugly? Almost. It wasn't a sudden thing. It took a few good months before he got desperate enough. I noticed my mug was empty somehow. And Applejack slid the bottle over to me. As I poured, a thought occurred. Wouldn't Sheriff Brayburn notice Dirty and his gang getting worse? The farm pony nodded again, and I set the bottle back on the table. Oh, he noticed all right, but that was during the Great Derailment, and he was too busy trying to keep trade flowing without the trains to bother with the pesky little gang. But they didn't say little for long, did they? You're darn right they didn't. Without my cousin constantly squashing them back into the dirt like the bugs they were, they got bigger, more dangerous. By the time the trains were fixed and Brayburg could finally turn his eyes back to the town, they were too big to handle on his own. I knew this part myself. He tried anyway, I said solemnly. Applejack smiled sadly. That he did. That silly pony was too brave for his own good. Do you know how it happened? Every description I'd found before was vague. I needed to know. No. It was in the middle of Dirty's latest spree, screaming through the town and robbing the ponies of their bits. The lying bastard was sitting at the bar drinking with his gang trashing the place. The good ponies ran and told Brayburn, and he realized his mistake. The blonde maned mare shook her head almost disbelievingly. I don't know what possessed my cousin to strap his gun and march straight to the bar. But it wasn't common sense, let me tell you that. Her voice was angry, but a tear rolled down her cheek. I'm sorry, I whispered. Don't be. My cousin died a hero, a thousand times nobler than every stallion in Canterlot. Applejack panted and looked down so I couldn't see her eyes. But it still hurts. Damn. It still does. It went against every urge in the rational part of my mind, but it was necessary. You don't have to tell me the rest if you don't want to. I will. It's just tough, is all. Take as long as you need. I'm in no rush. It was true. No pony expected me back for weeks. How about I ask you a question? Might help me relax. I spread my hooves to either side. Shoot. 
why are you asking about this? I knew some pony would want to know the whole story sooner or later, but what's your reason? I'm an independent investigator. I only heard about the story a few months ago, from a stallion in a bar. It got stuck in my head, and I decided to see if there was any truth to it. So you're not a law pony? I chuckled. <laughs> not a chance. I just like to get to the bottom of things. She raised an eyebrow, then shrugged. Every pony's got a hobby, I suppose. Taking a deep breath, the farm pony scrubbed her eyes. All right. I think I can do this. All right. So Bray marched right into the bar and went right up to Dirty and told him, You lied to me, Dirty Rich. Now how about y'all step outside so we can settle this like stallions? Ah, oh, damn, I breathed. Did he really challenge Dirty in front of his whole gang? You're damn right he did. Dirty wasn't about to refuse. Not in front of all of his buddies. But he also knew he would lose if he faced my cousin with honor. So... So he... He shot Bray in the back. As he led the way outside. Put another two bullets in the Bray fool as he fell. Applejack wasn't crying anymore. She was scowling. The coward hopped onto the table and shouted, This is my town. We're in charge. My blood was thundering through my veins. I had never felt so much anger in my life. And I had never even met Brayburn. I could only imagine what Applejack must have felt. And they were right. Without a sheriff, the town didn't know how to handle the gang. Brayburn's deputies were just regular ponies. They weren't made for fighting. So every pony tried to buckle down and board up when Dirty hit the streets. They were pretty much imprisoned in their own homes. Can y'all believe it? It sounds terrifying. No kidding. I was terrified when I heard the news and I don't even live out there. Dirty and his crew had complete control over Appaloosa. There wasn't a single pony who could stop them. They robbed the banks, trashed the houses, ripped down everything Brayburn had worked for. I think that was part of why Dirty liked it so much. He really hated Bray. All we saw him as the only thing that prevented him from being successful. So with my cousin dead, there was no pony left in the way. I took a large swallow from my mug to wash away the horrible images. But I've been to Appaloosa. I was there a few weeks ago. Everything was in good shape, and it's one of the busiest trade stops out there. Applejack drained the last of her cider. Now, this is the part where I'm glad you're not a law pony. Y'all remember when I told you about how us country folk like fixing our own problems? I nodded. Well, the second we got the news, me and my brother Big Mac knew what we had to do. We sent letters out across Equestria, to every apple we remembered. She leaned forward once more. And that's a lot of apples. What did the letter say? I asked. I still have a copy of one. She reached a hoof into her mane and withdrew a small piece of paper, offering it to me. I keep it with me so I never forget. I took the note and unfolded it. The writing was uneven, as earth pony notes often were, but it was still legible. Dirty Rich in Appaloosa has forgotten the red rule. Applejack continued before I could ask what it meant. Cause you see, we apples have a special kind of bond. Ain't nothing magical, but it's just as powerful. If y'all take one of us from the tree, the rest of us will come down on your head. Simple as that. A chill ran down my spine as I realized what she meant. So, we hired a couple of farm helpers to keep the place running, packed up a few things, and caught the next train to Appaloosa. Me and Mac hid in the town for a full two weeks until the last apple arrived. The townsfolk knew what was coming, and they let us hide with them. Finally, when we were all there, it was time to fix Appaloosa. The mare's green eyes focused on me intently as she began to recount that day. Was nearly dawn just before the sun came out fully. 
I was with Mac on the second story of a shop, just across from the bar that Dirty had been drinking at all night. The same damn bar where he had gunned down Bray. About 25 apples were in the windows of the buildings on our side of the street. Another 25 were on the ones opposite of us. She reached across the table and pulled the bottle back, refilling her mug without breaking eye contact. Dirty and his gang staggered out just as the sun cleared the horizon. They were laughing and hooting and talking about how they were going to burn down Bray's old house. I think that's what did it. The next thing I knew, I was pulling the trigger faster than my rifle could fire. Tore Dirty's ear right off with the first shot. <laughs> I never thought a stallion could scream that high. She chuckled darkly. Mac fired next, put a round clean in the liar's back legs. <laughs> Both of them. And then that was it. The floodgates opened and every apple started firing at those bastards. Couldn't even see him after the first minute. It was just a big red dust cloud. Dirty's head rolled out of it soon enough, and I personally put a shot straight through it. Bursted like a pumpkin it did. I felt sick, but she wasn't done. Then the dust cleared, and every single one of them was dead. I honestly couldn't tell you which one was dirty. There wasn't enough left. She sipped from her mug. After that, not a single pony spoke. I looked at Mac and he just nodded at me, slung his rifle over his back and went downstairs. I did likewise, and so did every apple. We just went our separate ways, by train or carriage. I was almost speechless. The truth was far more brutal than I had imagined. But... I found myself agreeing with this mayor's idea of country justice. They had a problem, and they fixed it themselves. End of story. So, does any pony else know the truth besides me? Applejack nodded. You're the first I've told. But word got around from the citizens who helped us. No law ponies have bothered any apple for two years, though. And I think we'll be fine. She smirked and placed her mug down. You'll be fine, too, just as long as you remember the Red Rule. And what is the Red Rule? I finally asked. The farm pony's expression hardened, and she looked me dead in the eyes. Don't fuck with the Apple family. <laughs>